Always check your operation and maintenance manual for proper safety procedures. And always wear the appropriate personal protective equipment. Hi, I'm Jack. Welcome back to Component Moment, your one-stop shop for tips and tricks on how to improve your performance and extend the life of your Caterpillar diesel engine. Hey, Jack. Hey, Nick. What do you got going on? Well, I'm checking the service life on this DPF right here. What do you mean service life? Service life. So, you know, every 5,000 hours, you actually have to take the DPF off of a 9.3 through C18 uh, Caterpillar engine to get it serviced, to get the ash removed. What? Well, I thought the ash came out when you regenerated. Ah, uh, you know what? You're not the first one to say that, Nick. Let's talk about that. So the DPF actually collects two things. So it collects soot and it collects ash, right? Ash comes from engine oil. It's a metal particulate. So it actually doesn't regenerate like soot does. Soot actually is uh, a particulate material that can actually be burned and then turned into a gas and it'll flow through the walls of the DPF and exit. So it can be treated on down the line. So the soot doesn't make ash? Soot does not make ash. So like this particular DPF right here, once I take that DPF off this engine to get it serviced, I'm really hoping that the outlet looks like this. A nice clean surface, you don't see any soot tracking or anything that shouldn't be there on the surface of this D the outlet of the DPF. This one in contrast is absolutely failed, right? So you see a lot of black soot trails uh, coming out of that DPF on the outlet side. This is the outlet? This is the outlet, right? So the inlet's like almost always gonna be black and have a lot of soot on it. The outlet should be very clean once your regeneration process successfully occurs, right? And okay. get rid of all the soot. And you can see there's some actual holes and cracks all over in, in the middle of this DPF. Oh yeah, it's cracked all the way across. Exactly, so what had happened there is this DPF was left on the engine well past that maintenance interval, uh, about a thousand hours. So they took it off, they cleaned it and put it back on the engine, didn't realize that that ash had hardened in there, couldn't get it out, right? So now that we, we have a, what we think is a clean DPF on the engine, really isn't. So we treat it like a clean DPF and we start filling soot up, but only in half of that channel. So now we create hot spots, we create uh, burns localized and cracking, up. burns and okay. <laughs> burns, and we end up with this. So uh, we just about tripled our repair cost on our engine. Can you guess, Nick, what's the number one downfall for a DPF? I don't know, uh, using the wrong oil maybe? That's a good one. And it does have something to do with oil, right? So we know we have to have low ash oil in any tier four final technology or tier four even interim technology. We've gotta have low ash engine oil, but idle time. So when we idle a diesel engine, we know that we pass more oil past the piston ring. Sure. Every diesel engine in the world ever manufactured passes more oil past the piston rings. Yep. If we're doing that, we're putting more ash into the DPF, right? So we could significantly decrease our service intervals if we don't account for that, that sure. oil and that idle time of an engine. One way to eliminate that, don't idle the engine, right? Sure. Um, that's hard for some customers. Sometimes their operations, you know, just it lend themselves to a lot, of, a lot of idle yeah. time, right? Hot, cold conditions, et cetera. We need to make sure we're taking care of our operators. But the more you can balance your operations, the less you have an operator sitting in a truck or a loader at idle, right? So sure. we wanna make sure we're paying attention to that. Limiting idle time on a tier four final machine is critical to the longevity of these DPFs and being able to make it to that 5,000 hours. And, and we know idle time costs a lot of fuel. A lot of fuel, right? And it really puts you in that severe duty application that we talked about. So before. we don't outline a lot of severe duty applications for after treatment, right? But we probably should. And if I were to outline severe duty for after treatment, idle time would be the number one indicator of a severe duty application. Is there some way I can just get the dealer just to maintain the silly thing for me? You know what, that's a good point because because there is so much involved in this, there's a lot of complexity. When one of these fails, there's a lot of things that have to happen after that, repairs made to other components, etc. Performance CVAs, maintenance contracts, specifically for the after, after treatment, oh, okay. those are available for our customers, right? Okay. So take care of everything that you wanna take care of, leave this stuff to the cat dealer who's trained, knows exactly how to handle the situations, so they can give you a CVA just for the after treatment? Just for the after treatment. Cool. Absolutely, it's called a performance CVA. Thanks for tuning in. Join us again for more tips and tricks on how to improve the performance and extend the life of your diesel engine.